Now on Denver 7 News at 6, play ball. It's opening day for the Rockies at home at Coors Field. We have team coverage to get you ready ahead of first pitch. I'm Brian Sanders. We are live at Coors Field today, and whether you have a lucky ticket to get inside the opening day game or not, we are breaking down all the fun for you from the events to the new food items. And I'm Denver 7's Colette Bordelon on Blake Street. Denver police want to make sure fans stay safe. The extra security measures you'll see today. And on the field, the Rockies are ready to defy expectations against the Dodgers. I don't really care what people have to say about um, whatever algorithms or projections or expected stats. Projections are projections. They're never, they're right. You still got to go play the game. So you can see our team is spread out across downtown to get you all ready for the game. We're pretty much ready yeah. for the game because yeah. we're kind of rocking our purple. Oh, definitely. It is purple day today all across Denver. Wear it. Wear it proudly. <laughs> so our Brian Sanders, Colette Borlon, and Veronica Costa will have more in a moment. But first, we're going to start with you, Lisa, and Jason here in the studio. Um, good weather. This was timing perfect. perfect. I mean, when you look at the last three days of just how windy it's been, this was great. Great, beautiful baseball weather. Take a look. Right now, we're looking at wind speeds that have really died down. Here at 6.01, anywhere from 5 to about 15 miles per hour. It is chilly out there, though, and Brian and Veronica and Colette, they'll be the first to tell you. It's kind of cold out of Coors Field right now. We're down to near freezing. It feels like 24. It is going to warm up pretty fast, though, today. Lots of sunshine in store. It'll be a beautiful day, and statewide, we're going to see sunny skies, calmer conditions, and some really pretty baseball weather. So take a look at your home opener forecast. By noon, we'll be at right around 58 degrees. A lot of people will be heading into the field by that point. 62 right before first pitch, and right around flyover time. You've got clear skies, a lot of sunshine, and some really pretty weather. If you're not heading to the game and you just want to enjoy your Friday at home in the backyard, you've got great weather for that. Mid to upper 60s in Erie, Parker 63, Evergreen near 60 this afternoon, 40s and 50s in the mountains. So a beautiful day, warmer statewide. It gets even warmer tomorrow. We'll take a look at your Saturday warm up. And then the cold front that's going to come right in behind it. So we don't get a huge break from the winds, Jason, but at least it's well, happening today. Yeah, exactly. And right now we have a good drive in around Coors Field. Let me take you there on the map to show you where we're going to see some road restrictions. Right here in front of Coors Field is the very typical closure of Blake Street. Right from 22nd, right by Coors Field to 20th. 20th Street remain open, as will uh, 22nd and Park Avenue, trying to get to or from uh, I-25. But around the stadium, you will see a lot of folks in around here, even if they're not going to the stadium and going to the game. Take a look at I-25 just away from the stadium a little bit. It's moving fine, but remember after this game, it should be ending around 5, 530, and all those folks will be hitting I-25, so we're not used to seeing all those folks hitting the highway in the evening commute, and it will be very busy. Right now, the drive times look fantastic. Anywhere you want to go across the east side of town, to or from the airport, or the south side. So it's a good start to the morning commute, and we'll keep an eye, of course, on Coors Field this morning. If you're wondering where our Brian Sanders is, he just couldn't wait. He had to start his opening day super early from Coors Field. Brian, pretty quiet out there right now. It, it, it's cold out here, but you know what? It, it doesn't matter. It's it's going to be a big party today. This is a celebration to have baseball back. Uh, the, the crowds are back in full capacity for the first time in three years for an opening day. Hundreds of thousands will be coming to the downtown area. So yeah, this is going to be a big purple party for the city of Denver today. Uh, across the street at McGregor Square from Coors Field, if you want to get the party started early at 11 o'clock, they're going to be having uh, drink specials. They will have have the game on their 66 foot uh, big screen TV in their plaza area. In fact, the, the Red Sox and Yankees get started at 11 a.m. So you could technically watch baseball all day long, even if you don't have a ticket to the game. Across the street at the Dairy Block, they'll have live music there. If you are lucky enough to have a ticket to get inside the stadium today, the gates will open at noon. Uh, here's a, a look at some of the pregame festivities. Of course, there's a lot of entertainment before the game. If you want to get down here early, find your seats you can watch batting practice you can head down to the field maybe get an autograph from one of the new players on the team this year hey, try out your own pitching arm or, or try the batting cages before the game uh, the the actual pregame ceremonies will start at 1 30 so you'll want to find your seat before then and there will be a flyover from the Colorado National Guard uh, after the national anthem 
from the Air Force Academy, we have Stellar Brass. They'll, they're coming with a band and a soloist, so both vocal and then some instruments. So they'll give that right patriotic flair, the right sound. Um, and then we also have a flyover scheduled with our friends over at Buckley Space Force Base. Yeah, and of course the headliner, pregame at least, will be Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson throwing out the ceremonial first pitch, uh, but he won't be out there alone. He will be joined by a gold award winning Girl Scout, the Boys and Girls Clubs of Metro Denver's Youth of the Year, and a season ticket holder since the Rockies' inception in 1993. Uh, by the way, if you've ever dreamed of singing the national anthem before a Rockies game, you can make a YouTube video and send the Rockies a link, and they like to invite uh, soloist to come sing the national anthem throughout the season, which would be a great honor. Well, of course, it isn't just about the, the fan festivities and the fun. That's a big part of it, of course. It's also about baseball and the Rockies and what's going to happen with them this season. There are a lot of new faces on the team. We want to bring in Denver 7's Troy Rank, who joins us uh, early this morning to talk about expectations for the play on the field, starting with uh, the new face of the franchise in the big acquisition of Chris Bryant. Troy? Yeah, Chris Bryant has won a World Series ring with the Chicago Cubs. He is going to be a leader for this team. Essentially, he's replacing Nolan Arenado in that way in terms of the figurehead. He's going to bring power. He's going to play mainly left field. Uh, he's going to find out that you have to text message the center fielder to play left in Coors because it's a Ponderoso out there. But he is a really good player. He's a good guy. The fans will embrace him. So we'll see how it goes. But Chris brings that World Series experience, a guy who's been there, done that. So that's part of the reason that and his power is why he's now a Colorado Rocky. Yeah, he's got a lot of offense too, and, and hopefully uh, uh, his home runs even go up here in the altitude of Coors Field. We will see. Another new face is Jose Iglesias replacing the beloved Trevor Story at shortstop. We've seen a little bit of him in action during spring training. What are your thoughts on, on uh, Trevor Story's replacement? Yeah, Iglesias, his glove has a velvet touch. It's soft. I mean, he is one of the slickest fielding shortstops in baseball, which is fantastic. Problem is, he doesn't hit very much. That's the reason the Angels cut him late last year. But fans will see when he's at defense that he might even be a better defender than Trevor Story. But you're going to miss Trevor Story's certain, his power and his speed. Iglesias is more of a kind of, Brian, a 1970s, 80s shortstop. Uh, all glove, not much bat. But he will solidify that infield if he just plays great defense you would expect the guys around him to hit that's McMahon Rogers and Crone so they could probably get away with it but fans will appreciate Iglesias' glove just don't look for him to hit for a lot of power that's not his game right let's talk a little bit about the pitching obviously the the hometown kid Kyle Freeland getting the start today uh all-star last year Armand Marquez also in the rotation how does the the pitching look uh to start the season well, they've got experience, and that helps at altitude. I mean, I remember when I was covering the Rockies back in the day, and I asked uh, Mets closer Armando Benitez about pitching at Coors Field, and he looked at me and said, El Diablo. <laughs> it is a very difficult place to pitch. But guys who've come up and learned it, it's easier for them to kind of have selective amnesia and get over the cheap hits. It's not really the home runs that kill you at Coors, Brian. It's all the cheap hits when you make a great pitch because the field's so vast and big, especially, obviously, the outfield. But Kyle Freeland competes. He will give you everything he's got. He's a Thomas Jefferson grad, a local star. He loves this opportunity. He grew up a Rockies fan, so you know how much today means to him. Herman Marquez, as you mentioned, was an all-star. Then you still have Antonio Senzatella. You have Austin Gomber. So you've got some guys. The fifth spot's going to be a carousel of pitchers like it is on most teams. But they've got some experience, but they need to step up. You can't keep talking about how they've got experience. They've got to perform. And with Kyle Freeland, it will start today. And he is looking forward to it. I know that. Yeah, and despite the lockout delay, it is still a 162 game season this year. Obviously, this is just game one, but uh, talk about expectations. I know uh, a lot of the players at least are hoping to surprise some people. The Rockies aren't expected to to uh, do much, but what are what do you feel like their chances are of making a run for the postseason? 
Yeah, listen, I covered their 07 World Series team, and that came out of nowhere. It was up with purple. That was a very ordinary team and got hot at the end. And this team probably has delusions of adequacy, Brian. But the reality is this, you know, you can get hot. You can make a trade late to get yourself in it. The biggest problem they have is the fact that they're in a division that's loaded with the Dodgers who are, you know, their projections are 100 wins. The Padres are around 85 wins. The Giants are around 85 wins. I mean, it's the division that's going to give them problems. If they can stay competitive in the NL West, and that starts today against the Dodgers, they'd have a chance for a winning record. I think that's high end. Most projections have them at 69 to 70 wins. So maybe they can get hot. They're going to hit more. They're going to have more power. So they should be a better watch. But can they be consistent on the road? Typically, when they have more power at home, it suffers on the road. But for me, high end would be 81 wins. And somewhere, realistically, they're probably around a 73 to 74 win team. But that's for later. Reality can clobber them in the head. Brian, today is about up with purple. It's about <laughs> celebrating baseball and the return of it to Lodo. It will be a magical day as it is every home opener down in Denver. That's it. And, and keep in mind, the Rockies won the opener last year against the Dodgers. So we'll see if that holds true again today. Uh, Troy, thank you so much for joining us uh, here this morning. Uh, in addition to the baseball, it's also about the businesses and, and the life that will be uh, in downtown today. And uh, hundreds of thousands of people are expected. I know Denver police also want to do everything to keep people safe down here. We want to send it to Denver 7's Colette Bordelon for more uh, uh, at the increased uh, safety and security around the stadium. Yeah, and Brian, like Troy was just saying, there's a kind of magic that's going to be in the air out here in Denver today. People coming back out first time in two years, getting to enjoy this opening day since the pandemic. But of course, with all those people out, there's going to be police out too. And their biggest concern, Denver police really want to make sure fans are getting to and from the game safely today. So if you're drinking, make sure you're not driving. Take an Uber, bus, or even walk since it's going to be nice out. But that also means drivers need to be on their A-game today, watching out for all the pedestrians or cyclists who are sharing the roads. Police say they'll also have officers stretching from Union Station to Coors Field. Most of them will be closer to the ballpark. Of course, if anyone notices anything suspicious, police want you to tell them as quickly as possible. If there's something just doesn't look right to you, whether it's, it's an individual, a person, or just a suspicious package or something, please bring it to their attention right away. Now I'm here right now at the intersection of 21st and Blake at this corner. Denver police will have a community table set up where people can come and get information on anything they might need, whether that be directions or any questions you have while at the game. Live this morning, Colette Portal on Denver 7. All right, thank you, Colette. Well, the next time you see me, we will be inside the stadium. We're going to talk about all the fan experiences and the new food offerings at the stadium this year coming up. Jessica, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Looking to hear all about that food. Thank you, Brian. Well, it is the first opening day in a new phase of the pandemic. We're hearing from business leaders excited to bring more people back downtown.